Welcome to Advanced Embedded Systems, Lecture 27. We'll be talking about digital low-pass filters. Today, make sure you update your time logs. I posted online uh, on Canvas a spreadsheet so you can update your time logs as you go to document how the class time you're working on this class. Uh, your project proposals are due today. I created a campus submission so you can put your initial proposals in today and I'll try to get back some comments so you can actually uh, modify them before the actual due date of Wednesday for the final version of your project. Uh, today we're going to be talking about digital low-pass filters, how, how we filter, how they work. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about low-pass filters and then go through a bunch of filter design problems, which will be very useful for the exam as well as lab four. So let's get into filtering. Some of the problems when you take a sinusoidal analog signal and you uh, sample it at discrete times, you have a, an aliasing problem, especially when you talk about frequency folding. So, here's a uh, frequency chart showing amplitude versus frequency. And if we sample a signal, say at F of S, or F of S to F of S, uh, frequency sampling rate, sometimes the noise at those upper frequencies can fold back into the earlier harmonics. So you have the second harmonic and the first harmonic for the sampling rate, and noise here can fold back to here or here, back to F of S over 2. So, obviously, as same, it goes the same the other way as well. So power you have here uh, in the other harmonics as you go out, uh, they're going to be lower and lower power. But we're going to use a low-pass filter to attenuate that signal. So we're going to ramp it down. No uh, filter works perfectly, but it's going to attenuate the signal as it goes to those higher frequencies. So this cutoff frequency at f of s over 2, uh, it's going to start uh, reducing the uh, decibels per decade as it uh, the frequency increases. So now as we look at these observed frequencies, you know, f of s at the sampling rate, our observed frequency is around 0. And then f of s over 2 is our observed frequency uh, right here. In order to address this problem, we're going to utilize a principle called attenuation. That's how filters work. They attenuate the signal to basically change the amplitude of the waveform without changing its frequency. And that attenuation, the amount of attenuation is quantified in terms of decibels. So if I have, and we have a, uh, we have a, an equation, the amount of decibels that we're attenuating is based upon 20 times the log of base 10 of B out over B in. So we're going to talk about different fractions. So that's B out over B in after before and after the filter. So if I have, and notice this sinusoidal waveform is one volt at 48 kilohertz. It's um, based on the audio codec that we have in our system. So that's the input voltage and then the output. Uh, we're going to have a fractional value of that, V out over V in, and we'll figure out how many decibels. So basically we're running these numbers. So if V out of V in log base 10 times 20, we're going to get zero change in decibels. 
if I have uh, a tenth, so 0 0.1 volts, divided by 48 kilohertz V in, I'm going to actually get it minus 20 decibels. So we're going to get basically a negative 1 out of this times 20 gives me a minus 20 attenuation of the signal. So minus 20 dB uh, loss. If out over in is uh, 1 over 100, we're going to get a minus 40. 1 over 1,000 will give you a minus 60, so that's going to basically be um, 10 to the minus 3. So we're going to get minus 3 out of that. And multiply by 20, we get minus 60 decibels. If the fraction of voltage out over voltage in is 1 over 256, we're going to get roughly 48, minus 48 decibels, and over 1024, we're going to get roughly a little bit more than 60, so 60.206 for that. If I have three decibels, you can actually solve for that the uh, out over the in amplitude difference, and I'm going to get 1 over 1.41, and for minus 68 dB, it's going to be a little bit smaller than that, so we're going to get 1 over 25.12, essentially. And since we're doing this class online, I decided to throw in some of my notes that I would typically be writing on the board, so typically we're going to have our uh, 48 kilohertz audio codec, you're going to be plugging in a filter in here uh, before it is brought into the ADC, analog to digital converter pin. And every ADC has a number of bits, a sampling frequency, and then voltage range. Another thing we're going to talk about today is about uh, the number of bits for that ADC will tell us how much um, quantized value of noise we're going to have, and we're going to talk about that typically based on the one unit of least pace, place. So if there's 18 bits, that zero bit is the one unit of least place, and we're going to talk about uh, those at a later point. So this just shows those frequencies overlaying each other. So I have my observed frequency, Fs over 2, and amplitude versus um, frequency over time. If I have an observed frequency of 1 or 2 kilohertz, let's say, uh, it's going to repeat at the other harmonics. And Frequency at frequency samplings, it's going to look at look like zero hertz. So at uh, one or two kilohertz, let's say two kilohertz, and we're at 48 kilohertz. 48 kilohertz is our sampling frequency. We're going to have signals at 50 hertz kilohertz that exist at two kilohertz. So if I have noise. Uh, let's say fluorescent lights it might be observed here at 50 kilohertz. We're going to see it again at 2 kilohertz. So what we want to do is we want to attenuate that signal. Typically, for a first-order filter, we're going to attenuate at minus 20 dB per decade. So we're sampling here at Fs over 2, and that frequency is falling off, and we have roughly 40, minus 48 dB uh, signal at the sampling frequency. So our corner frequency is Fs over 2. At the sampling frequency, we're going to have minus 48 dB. And then at 2 Fs, we're going to have roughly 96, minus 96 dB. So let's go through some questions. Some 
calculations. If we have an input sine wave into a circuit that is attenuated by minus 40 dB, what would be the output of the waveform? So we know 40 dB on the left-hand side, and 20 log of the out over the in, so we just need to find a fractional portion. If I keep going, divide out the 20, we get a minus 2 is log of the in. Base 10 of the out over the in, if you remember, log base b of x equals y is exactly if b to the power of y equals x. So essentially we can multiply each side by 10 and then exponential, no, put it in the exponent. So I have 10 to the power of negative 2 uh, equals v out over v in. We can divide that out. Since we have one bolt, it divides out. And we get a 0 0.01 for the out. Which is essentially 10 millivolts. And you want to make sure when you put this, you put in the units, volts, as well as uh, use scientific notation. You don't want to put in 0 0.01 volts. You want to make it 10 millivolts. Question two, and you can follow along on the handout as well. If you have an input of one volt on a sine wave into a circuit and it's attenuated by 68 dB, what would the amplitude of the output waveform be? So plugging in our numbers, we get minus 68 dB and log 20 log, divide it out, and we get 0.34 or minus 0.3. 3.4 log of the out of the in, so uh, 10 to log base 10 for e to that. We're going to reduce that, and then we get 10 to the minus 3.4 power on the other side, and divide out 1 volt, we get 0.4 millivolts. Alright, so Question three, if you reduce the signal by a factor of one over 256, how many decibels would you need to attenuate it by? So, finding out how many decibels, we're basically plugging in our factor of V out over V in, one over 256. 20 log of that, we're gonna get minus 48 dB. Basic plug and chug equations. So let's talk about how we're going to actually attenuate these signals using a low-pass filter. So, low-pass filter, we use that to attenuate our signals. We can build a simple, very simple, analog low-pass filter by putting a resistor and capacitor in parallel. So we have our input voltage and our output voltage into that filter. Right now we've been just looking at a box, but I can plug it in. Uh, v in and V out, so our V in is a sinusoidal waveform, not a resistor, and a capacitor. And the output, essentially, will take those high changing frequencies and using the capacitor and resistor combination, it will cut off those um, the higher frequencies based on what size of resistor and capacitor we have. This schematic actually shows uh, the board we used to use for this class, which was the Atlas board. Uh, and it had a circuit arrangement shown by the pairs 153 and C43. These uh, resistor capacitor combinations and these resistor capacitor combinations, they would essentially create a low pass filter. It actually created a high pass using the resistor. This C38 and 153 and then a low-pass filter here with a completely different corner frequency or cutoff frequency going to the audio jack out. Uh, for this, basically the corner frequency or cutoff frequency is 1 over 2 pi r times c. So given those 
values, we get a cutoff frequency of roughly 72 kilohertz. The, <clears throat> the high pass filter is um, much lower, it's less than one, I believe. It was on the order of 0.72 hertz. I can't remember, but you can calculate it uh, using the C38 if you want. But we're just going to talk about low pass filters at this point in time. So, again, from that same electronics website that talked about the simple um, filter, it also talks about frequency response. So, low pass filters at that corner frequency. The pass band is on the left, there's no attenuation here, and then the stop band, everything above that corner frequency. Where those two meet, there's actually a minus 3 dB loss right at the corner frequency. And then everything else after that has a slope of roughly minus 20 dB per decade for a first order filter. And this is the bandwidth of what we're passing. High pass filters work the same way, except reverse. They're just going to attenuate uh, below the value and then pass above. So really, this filter on the previous slide is more of a band pass filter, so it's actually attenuating too. But we're only going to look at the, uh, yeah, the low pass, where it's killing all the higher, or attenuating all the higher frequencies. This is on a logarithmic scale, so it makes it look a little bit different. Um, but more information on the website if you want to take a look at that. One thing you do want to note, if you do apply a low-pass filter, you are going to get a little bit of phase shifting in your frequency, but it's not going to change the frequency. That'll be right at the point see is a 45 degree phase shift. This is what it looks like in the Nexus video. And you can see our out, left and right output channels going to that green audio jack and all the circuitry that's on the board, uh, line in, aux in, and so on and so forth. And then the headphone jacks as well, left and right channels. They do have a filter and plugged in here. We're going to look at this one in particular. Uh, as you notice, they they work with a higher high pass filter, so it's going to be a capacitor in series. Uh, and then you have the resistor going shunting the ground. This is going to emit higher frequencies or lower frequencies. And it's only going to pass the higher frequencies. So it's a high pass filter works the same way and it's roughly 1.59 hertz for the corner frequency. Uh, but that's what we have in our Nexus video boards. Our audio codec actually has some digital filtering that happens within the circuit, so that's not shown on the schematic for the board. So let's get into some filtering design problems. So understanding um, all the concepts that we've talked about, we talk about aliasing, when we're sampling an analog signal at 48 kilohertz, there's many different frequencies that will look similar. So observed frequency comes in from the left of this graph. At 2 kilohertz, which is right here on the graph, you're going to have repeating frequencies at FS, minus that frequency, and then plus that frequency on each of the harmonics, where you're going to see through one, two, and three different values that look similar to that uh, two kilohertz signal that were of interest. So our first harmonic, we're going to have a two kilohertz signal, and then we're also going to have that 48 minus two kilohertz at 46 kilohertz. On the second harmonic, we'll have one at 50, so 48 plus 2, 96 minus 2, 94, and then 98, and then 142 for the third harmonic. Those signals at those locations will look the same, similar, and you're going to have frequent uh, 
full pack of noise if we have noise at those frequencies. So, like fluorescent lights, we can have the noise from them folding back into the two kilohertz of the lower frequencies. A first order low pass filter has a cutoff. We're going to set it up with a cutoff frequency of two kilohertz. And we're going to describe the attenuation of that signal at 80 kilohertz in decibels in the ratio of output to input voltage. Since you, since a decade is a multiplicative factor of 10, we just need to know how many powers of 10 we have uh, to multiply by in order to increase 2 to the value of 80, 80 kilohertz. So 2 times 10 to some power is going to be equal to 80, and that's going to yield uh, the number of decades. So if I have x equals log 10, log base 10, so this of 80 over 2, I'm going to essentially get 1.6 de decades. So just remember the um, power, the exponent, and relationship between exponent and log base 10. So we're going to get log base 10 of 80 divided by 2, we're going to get 1.6 decades to uh, the 80 kilohertz. So we wanted to go from a 1 kilohertz signal to a 10 kilohertz, we go one decade. 10 to 100 kilohertz is one decade. At 1 to 100 kilohertz, we get two decades, and then 1 to 48 kilohertz is 1.7 decades. Well, doing the same math problem we did on the previous slide. So we're basically just putting the, frac the fractional value of that and then taking a the base 10 of that to find out the number of decades that we have between them. <coughs> so if we know that a 80 kilohertz waveform is 1.6 decades above a 2 kilohertz waveform, since a low pass filter will attenuate minus 20 dB per decade, we can calculate how much we're attenuating that signal just by multiplying the number of decades by minus 20 dB per decade. That's the remaining decades. We get to minus 32 dB. These decibels can be converted to the ratio of output for over input using the following definition. All right, so we have 32 dB is equal to 20 dB times the log base 10 of the output of the input. Solving, we get 1 over 40, which is basically 2 over 80, which is 0.025. So that is our ratio of output to input. If we wanted to, to have our analog to digital converter convert our signal, if we're doing that and we're sampling our frequency, we're working in this case with a 10 bit ADC. And we would like to attenuate our uh, sub frequency below one half unit of least place. So if you have a 10 bit, signal, ADC, and we're quantitizing our, our sampling our value and quantitizing it, one half ULP would basically uh, be 0.5, right? So that's going to be an 11th bit of an ADC. And we can calculate how many decibels would be required to limit the noise to one half of the Ten bit ADC. So again, our ten bit ADC is a range of zero to ten twenty three. So half of the unit of least pace place would be one part in two thousand forty eight, which is eleven bits. So we're basically just adding a number, another bit to 
uh, reduce our noise to that level. So in terms of decibels, this is going to be 20 times the log base 10 of 1 over 2 to the power of 11. So 11 is the number of bits we're using. You can also multiply it by 2 to the negative 11, or it's just 1 over 2 to the 11. Same thing. We're going to plug that in, and we get 66 dB. That's good. Can show you a few of these. I highly encourage you to be going through and actually plugging these into your calculators. Two to the power of eleven, negative, and then we take the log base ten and multiply by twenty minus sixty-six dB just like we, we thought. Okay. Plug and chug. Make sure you're understanding how these relationships work. So, what if we changed it to one UOP instead of one half UOP? That would just mean we're going to uh, unit of least place would be uh, one part in 1023, thus 2 to the negative 10. I'm showing it the other way. Plug and check that. We get minus uh, 60 dB. Minus 60 dB. frequency. We have a signal of interest. It's down here on our frequency diagram in the zero. Oops, one. Down here in the zero to two K region of our observed frequency. So we're looking at the signal of interest in zero to two K. We're going to build a second order filter and we have a 10 bit ADC. So our signal of interest we're going to have all the noise that exists right in here. So we're going to essentially have a corner frequency of our frequency filter, so it's not going to attenuate anything below 2 kilohertz, but we're going to have this frequency, this area of interest, so uh, f of s divided by minus 2k, we want to have at least a minus 20 dB attenuation of our signal on the log scale. And we're going to second order filter, instead of minus 20 dB per decade, we're going to have a minus 40 dB per decade, because a second order filter, you're going to double that from minus 20 dB per decade to minus 40. So, What's the minimum sampling rate? So what's the sampling rate that we need to get at one unit of least place? So we re reduce our first fold back to uh, basically minus 60 dB, and that's almost uh, one ULP. We learned about this in the previous slides, just calculating that out. log and we have 10 bits so 2 to the minus 10 gets us minus 60 dB at 1 ULP. Our corner frequency again is set at 2 kilohertz. And then since our corner frequency that four, first fold back to 2 kilohertz must be reduced by that uh, 57 dB. So right at that corner frequency we have a minus uh, 3 dB loss already so that's, that's where the corner frequency and that's how they work. Minus 3 dB, so then we need to get 3 plus 57 dB to get at least minus 60 dB at FS minus 2. Same thing there, minus 2. So at minus 40 dB per decade, that's roughly 
14.25 decades above kilohertz. So 1.425 decades above there. So f of s minus 2, we're going to set that equal to 2 kilohertz times 10 to the power of 1.425 to figure out exactly how much, uh, what frequency we're going to, what frequency we're going to get uh, reduced to this minus 57 dB, ultimately minus 60 dB total. Uh, and we're going to reach that at 53 kilohertz, which is fs minus 2. So we need our minimum sample frequency to be 2 above that. So fs minus 2 is equal to 53 kilohertz. We're going to need a sampling frequency of at least 55 kilohertz to be minus 60 dB total where we're going to be sampling. Using a second order filter and a 10 to ABC. If we reduce the minimum uh, to 0.5 ULP, we're going to go full back frequencies at 66 dB. That's at most one half ULP. So our corner frequency is the same. So we need to reduce it at least by 63 dB, which is 66 minus 3 at the corner frequency. Minus 40 dB, since we're using a second order equation still for a filter. Uh, that will be 1.5 decades above 2 kilohertz. Uh, so fs minus 2 will be 2 kilohertz times 10 to the power of 1.58, giving us uh, 2 decades above at 76 kilohertz. Thus, our sampling frequency should be a minimum of 78 kilohertz. Now, this next problem, uh, given a signal of interest 0 to 2K, uh, we're using a first-order filter and an 8-bit ADC to sample. What is the sampling rate we need for that? The underlying goal is to reduce any noise holding back into our signal below 1 ULP in the ADC. So since we're using an 8-bit ADC, we want to reduce the noise to 1 over 256, or 1 over 2 to the power of 8, or 2 to the negative 8 of that signal. So we plug that in to our equation, 20 times the log base 10, or 2 to the power of negative 8, we're going to get 48 dB. We're going to need to be minus 48 dB of attenuation to reduce any noise folded back below 1 ULP, 1 unit of least place in an 8-bit ADC. So if we sample a frequency, uh, sampling frequency, then a region between f of s and f of s minus 2 will get folded back into our signal band. So that's basically 0 to 2k. That all gets folded back. Consequently, the filter must be between 2 and f of s minus 2 to attenuate that signal. And we have a first order filter, so we get only 20 dB per decade of attenuation. We can calculate based upon we need minus 48 dB per day. Uh, attenuation. That means 48 over 20, we need 2.4 decades or a factor of 251 over 2K. And then we're going to get to 502 kilohertz. So, so the factor of 251 is essentially. 10 to the power of 2 to the 4, 2.4, 10 to the power of 2.4, and we're going to get that 251, 10 to the power of 2.4, and then 
f of s minus 2k, we get 2k times 10 to the power of 2.4, getting that 251 times 2k, we're going to get 502 kilohertz. Thus, our f of s needs to be, our sampling rate needs to be 2 kilohertz above that at 504 kilohertz. Another, another example will have a signal of interest again at 0 to 2k. First order filter versus uh, being a second. Uh, this is a first order as well. So we're going to use a first order filter with a 10 to ADC. We want the minimum sampling rate to be quantized the noise to one half ULP. So we're going to reduce that fold back to that minus 66 dB for a half ULP. So that's basically. So we essentially get that minus 66 dB. So we have 20 minus 20 times. to the negative 11, log base 10 from 2 to the negative 11 to get that 66. First fold back to a kilohertz must be reduced by 63 dB because we're going to have that initial 3 dB at the corner frequency. And then it must reduce at least by 63 dB after that. And it's first order filter. So then we're going to get minus 20 dB per decade. And we're going to have 3.15 decades above 2 kilohertz if we're comparing those. Thus, essentially, if you're um, dividing out minus 63 dB over 20 dB per decade, we get 3.15 decades above, and 2 kilohertz times. 10 to the power of 3.15 decades, we're going to get 22.8 megahertz. So our minimum sampling frequency, uh, at best minus 2, we're going to add another 2 kilohertz onto this, and this megs plus kilohertz, so it's roughly 2.8 megahertz is our minimum sampling frequency. That is a first order filter, and that was a little bit previous that we did a second order filter. But the sampling frequency for the first order filter has to be quite a bit faster to be able to get rid of that noise and quantize it, not that noise. So, pretty big difference. Uh, second order filter. Again, here's another one where we have our signal of interest. Talk about filter spec specifications on this one. They're going to use an 8 bit ADC, maximum possible sampling rate of 80 kilohertz. Uh, I threw in some of my notes that I would normally put on the screen or on the whiteboard and drawn up. We have a signal of interest, 8 bit ADC, so that's 48 dB. Max sampling rate of 48, 80 kilohertz. Uh, what order of filter do we need? So we talked about examples of a first order and a second order filter, but we want to get. So we have an 8 bit ADC required. So we have a signal of interest 0 to 2k. So 80 kilohertz minus 2, so 78 kilohertz and up through that sampling frequency, that's our, we need to attenuate our signal by 48 dB. So an 8-bit 8 ADC, since it's 8 bits, uh, we get 48 dB of attenuation just by using the equation we learned about. The equation I learned about before was minus 20 times the log of 2 to the power of negative 8 to get 1 ULP and an 8 bit ABC. 2 to the negative 8. 
gives us minus 40 dB of attenuation to get the noise level below that bias. We need to go back down by 48 dB from 2 kilohertz to 78 kilohertz. If we plug that in, we're going to get roughly uh, 1.6 decades. And we can solve uh, 2K times 10 to the number of decades to get 7. Solve the equation to find that value, 1.6 decades. If our uh, roll off of an X order low pass filter is minus 20 dB, 20x dB per decade, so if we have a first order, it would be 1, second order would be 2, so minus 40 dB per decade, third order would be times 3 and we get minus 60 dB per decade. To get down 48 dB uh, in 1.6 decades, we're gonna need a value of x of 1.5, so we're gonna roughly need at least a second order filter to attenuate our signal enough to the 80 kilohertz sampling frequency. So in this equation, or in this example, we need a second order filter to attenuate it enough to get down there. Another, here's another example using a 16-bit ADC and a fourth order filter, so we can actually attenuate a lot more per decade with the fourth order, minus 80 dB per decade. Our sampling frequency is set at 250 kilohertz. And what's the maximum fre frequency of our signal of interest? It depends on the filter and ADC. So we have a 16-bit ADC requiring 96 dB of attenuation to get the noise down below on the OP. And if you just plug it into the equation for the 16-bit, you can find that value. Just in case you forgot, you can plug in that equation, so we have 2 to the power of 16, so minus 16. Get that value, and take log base 10 of that, to get minus 4.8 times 20, we're going to get 96 dB. Minus 96 dB of attenuation to get our noise level below 1 LP. So the sampling frequency, we're just going to call it F alpha, just to keep it separate. Uh, our foldback will occur at F minus, or 250K minus F of alpha. If you want to look at the frequency diagram, so zero to some frequency alpha, 250 minus frequency alpha, this is our foldback frequency. We need to figure out what our sampling frequency we need to get down using a fourth order filter to minus 96 dB at here at 250 minus F of alpha. So we have our frequency alpha, sampling frequency that we want times 10 to some decade, amount of decades times 256. 50k minus alpha, and we have a log base 10 of 250k minus alpha over frequency alpha. So we're basically plugging in those values. Our fourth order filter is going to roll off at minus 80 dB per decade. So it's a fourth order pair filter, so we have 20 minus, minus 20 times 4 dB per decade. Plug each of those into our equations, so we have AD minus 80 dB per decade, and it's 96 dB, and plug in our other equation. We're going to calculate how to get a 14.8 kilohertz run through, make sure you get that. That is our sampling frequency that we need. So. essentially our uh, lecture 
That concludes our lecture for today. We have the next lecture. We're going to go more into our lesson 28. We are our revised final project proposal will be due. I will get you back some comments and from what you submit online in Canvas, and I'll get that back to you by hopefully by tomorrow, so that you can get it revised and then sent back to me. If you have any questions, make sure you look at uh, the page and look at the rubric to make sure for your proposal you're covering all the required items uh, of a proposal project cover, need statement, marketing requirement level zero description and flow graphs talking about how your design is put together. And again, if you look at the actual project document, I give you a sample a template. Follow the template. Don't give me a reason to take off points. That concludes briefing for today. Have a good day.